Welcome to Design Fusion's Solid Edge blog. This is part two of the Solid Edge University 2023 Baker's Dozen of Solid Edge Tips and Tricks. These tips and tricks are inspired by questions from our tech line and questions received from training. Users do not have to be in Solid Edge 2023 to use these tips and tricks. Continuing from part one, this is tips and tricks number five, expose variables. Users can tag or expose a variable in any model file, allowing that variable to be used as a custom property. This custom property could then be used in the draft for draft parts list, property text callouts, etc. You expose the variable by checking the little box under the expose column. You can then provide a unique expose name if you wish. In the following demonstration, I'll give you an example of where this could be helpful. In this example, the customer would like to have the surface area of the bottom face placed on the draft sheet. To achieve this, we first must obtain the surface area of the bottom face. To do this, I use the measurement command on the inspect tab and under the options, I'll deselect every measurement type except the surface area. I then select the bottom face to obtain the surface area. I then click on the measure variables option and I wanna save this variable which is V3218 and I say okay. I then go up to my Tools tab and select the Variable Table. I locate the V3218, notice it's at the bottom here, and I expose it, and I'm going to give this a unique name. I'll type in Bottom Face Surface Area, and hit the Enter key. Exposing the variable and giving it a unique name allows me to create a custom property. To verify this, I can go to the Files menu, Info, File Properties, and I'll scroll down to the Custom Properties, and there's my custom property at the bottom. Now that I have a custom property created, I can go and create my drawing file. I'll use the Drawing from Active Model command. I'll use the default settings and create my drawing file. Once I'm in the draft environment, I'll create a bottom face view. And then I'll launch my callout command. In the callout text field, I'm going to start typing my note. I'm going to say surface area of bottom face equals. On the second line, I'm going to do a property text callout. I'll go to index reference. And notice at the top here, I have my custom property. I'll select that, click the select button, and click OK. You can see the preview here, and I'm happy with that. So I'll click OK, and I can place this callout. I'll increase the font size so that you can actually see the callout and I'll place it on the drawing sheet, and I've satisfied the customer's need using exposed variables. Tips and tricks number six, thin region command. The thin region command allows us to apply thin walled features on selected or specified regions of a model. Notice the first image on the slide is a thin region feature created by the thin region command. The second image shows what would happen if we did a thin wall feature. In this case, it would thin the cylinder, which is not desired. The steps are listed on this slide on how to do this, but let me demonstrate this in Solid Edge. In this demonstration, you'll notice if I run a thin wall on this part, and I'll use a 1 8 inch thickness, I'll select the open face to just be the top face, and I'll hit the preview. And you can see the results here, the parts thinned all the way down to the bottom of the cylinder. Let's assume that you want the cylinder to be solid and just the top part to be thin walled. 
For that, you can use the thin region command found under the thin wall command. In the thin region command, you start by selecting all the walls that will be affected by the thinning process. And then you enter in the value that you want to use as your thin wall. In this case, we'll use the same value as the thin region did. And then you select your open face, accept it, and then you select your capping face. In this case, I'm using the bottom face. For the offset value, I'll use the same as the wall thickness, although it doesn't have to be. I'll accept that. I'll click on preview. And you can see that I get the desired result that I want. I click finish and I have my thin region feature. Tips and tricks number seven, how to obtain a volume value. You can easily obtain the volume of something such as a bottle or a tank using one of our surfacing commands. There is an option in the intersect command which allows us to create design bodies. In the following demonstration, I'll use a thin surface and a model of a bottle, and I'll be able to generate the internal void and then calculate the volume of that void. To find the volume of this bottle, I've created a surface to represent the fill line of the bottle. I then go to my surfacing tab and I locate the intersect command. In the intersect command, I select the bottle and I select the surface. Under the options, I'm going to select the option to create design bodies. I'll accept that. And then I get this dialog come up. And in this dialog, I don't want to keep the solid bodies, just the void region. Notice the bluish void in the middle. I'll accept that. Finish the command. And then I'm going to hide the surface and I'll hide the bottle. I'm left with the void or the inside of the bottle. So I want to activate this, make it my active body. And then I'm going to take the bottle and temporarily turn it into a construction body. I'll get this warning and I'm just going to say yes because this is just a temporary change. Notice that the bottle now becomes a construction color. I'll go back to the active body and say show only. So to get the volume of this solid, I simply go to the inspect tab and select the properties command. I'm going to update this to get the most up to date. I will get this error, but I can dismiss it because I don't need density to get the volume. And there's the volume. Tips and tricks number eight. Selection Tools in Assembly. I recently ran an advanced assembly course out west, which had 14 students, and I would say at least 12 of them were unaware of all of our assembly selection tools, which was a bit of a surprise. This slide shows all of the selection tools that are available in the assembly environment. For this demonstration, I'll show you how to use the more common ones. And in the last demonstration, in part three, I'll show you the face priority and part priority. I'll start with this assembly to introduce you to these select tools. First one here is overlapping. If I turn that on when I do a fence or window select, anything within the fence and overlapping the fence gets selected. With that option turned off, only items within the fenced area are selected. Just beneath the overlapping command, we have the select parts by size command. You first select whether you want to use the default smaller and equal to, or the second option larger and equal to. I'll just use the default here, and then I can put in a scalar part size ranging between 1 and 100. Notice as I enter 1, the smallest parts are selected. I can bump this up to 2 and more parts are added, three, four, five, and so forth. I can also click the previous level to take it down one level. I'll accept my selection, and then I'll say show only. 
And this leaves me with a selection of all my small parts, which I could easily group into a hardware group. I'll just select the top level assembly and say show all. Another selection command is the select all visible parts command. This allows you to select partially or fully visible parts. Beneath that we have three commands that initially are ghosted out. To use these commands you must pre-select a part. For example, I'll select this clamp and then I'll select the select all identical parts command. Notice I now have a selection group of all the clamps and I can do something to it like change the style. Another one of these tools allows me to predetermine how parts are connected to each other. For example, let's say I need to make a change to this part. I select the component and then select the command parts constrained to. And this shows me all the parts that have relationships with this selected part. This is ideal if I have to move something to determine what other parts could be affected. I'll switch to this assembly to demonstrate the last of those three commands. I'll select this bolt, which is in a sub-assembly, and then I'll select the command entitled Select in Identical Sub-Assemblies. Notice it shows me the component in the identical sub-assembly. Notice that this lets me know that one of the sub-assemblies was rotated when it was placed. In this case, it's not important, but it could be. So that's a quick look at some time-saving selection tools just a mouse click away. This brings us to the end of this blog. If you want to learn more, check out our online training webpage at the link shown on this slide.